All right, we're rolling. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, I am April Smith. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming to this webinar. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about Project Pals today. Um, we have a couple really awesome guests with us, but um, for those of you who are kind of new to me or my email list, and this is the first thing you've gotten from me, I just wanted to introduce myself. I am April Smith. Um, I have the website performingeducation.com, which is a blog where I talk a lot about project-based learning. I'm also the author of Project-Based Learning Made Simple, uh, which is a book for grades three through five, but I work a lot with um, all the way from K all the way up to 12 and with some preschool classrooms um, just to help teachers implement project-based learning in a way that doesn't, um, isn't really difficult for them to do and also kind of just goes smoothly. Um, so I started using Project Pals a couple weeks ago and I want to show you all a little bit about um, what I made in Project Pals for my first couple projects. Um, but before we get to that, I want to introduce the co-founders of Project Pals. Um, so I have Yuri and Miriam here. And so Miriam, can you tell our listeners a little bit about how this got started and why you started it? Yes. Hi, my name is Miriam Bogler and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Pals. I used to be a computer teacher for more than two decades. And I uh, know, and students would come to my computer lab to work on projects. As I was watching them, I noticed that students had difficulty with investigations and teachers did not have a tool that they were able to manage the deep learning experience. I was also teaching robotics uh, students and decided to create a FileMaker Pro database that's going to manage the entire process. These students were coming from underserved communities and the entire experience of actually being able to build a robot and also go into the underlying uh, experience, underlying concept experience was really powerful and very successful. So I decided that if this can be done for robotics, it probably can be done for any subject. And that's why I created Project Pals. I'm glad you did because I really enjoyed using it and I think that everybody that's on here is really interested in how they can use it to kind of simplify how they do project-based learning with their students that have devices. Excellent and um, with that I'll, I'll kind of jump in and introduce myself. Um, I'm Yuri Bogler. Um, this is actually Project Pell is also a family business. Miriam is, is my mom as well and uh, this is her vision and I'm helping her bring it uh, to life. My, my experience is more um, in marketing and technology companies, um, but definitely everything, all the work that I've done in the last 10, 15 years has been very project-based uh, just at the enterprise level. So I'm very passionate about uh, the ability for people to collaborate because I've seen it firsthand. That's really the work that's being done in the modern workplace. And um, I think Project Pals brings elements of, of that project management that's very uh, common in the workplace into the classroom and really preparing students for the skills that are gonna be expected of them to be able to problem solve collaboratively. Um, and I think, um, April, at this time, we're going to show Project Pals a little bit, and then we'll jump in and show your, and show your projects. Does that sound good? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, go ahead. Great. So I'm going to share my screen over here. And I'm just going to show... Questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat, and then once we get to the end, then we'll take some questions. But if you have questions and you don't want to forget them, you can put them in chat um, as he kind of shows you a little bit about it. Perfect. Well, before I jump into the application, just a little bit of context. Um, you know, we, uh, our mission is to connect the world in deep learning through collaborative problem solving. And we believe in the power of project based learning to engage students to improve learning outcomes. Um, but basically, you know, we know that that implementing project based learning is challenging, right? Whether it's coming up with project ideas, managing multiple projects at the same time can be a challenge. Uh, doing interdisciplinary collaboration across, across classroom walls. Um, often projects are managed primarily offline, which kind of limits the amount of data that you're collecting about student involvement and contribution, um, which makes assessing individual contribution sometimes a challenge in collaborative work. You know, often that's a pain point from our experience working with a lot of teachers and, and, and students in this type of work is who, who exactly did what. So we really built a platform to kind of address all those issues. And I'll just kind of skip through some of the deck, but jump to the end here that um, it's an end-to-end -end project management solution. You basically can plan projects and project pals. The students will collaborate on the projects together. Um, and then there's a lot of tools built in to monitor and respond to student work. 
as well as to share projects with parents. So instead of, you know, you're not really going to be forced to split the poster board into thirds and send it home with three different students here. You have a digital version of this project that you can share with all the stakeholders who, who are interested in seeing the student work. Um, with that, I will jump into the application itself and kind of give you a quick um, overview of just the workflow and, and kind of how you work in Project Pals at a very high level. Um, I think as April will show you, uh, there's a lot of depth to this platform. You can learn a lot. There's a lot of advanced features, but you don't need to know the advanced features to get started. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to that when we get in there, but I'll just give you a very high level overview of how to work in Project Pals because it is quite different than typical right now, right? You're going to create a lesson plan with project instructions, or maybe you might get something from, from April or someone else, and you might distribute printed materials, or students might go and, and kind of respond to that activity and do collaboration elsewhere. elsewhere. In Project Pals, you actually do the planning in Project Pals, and then you're going to assign a master project down to your students who are going to make copies of that project and collaborate all within Project Pals. So it sort of manages the entire end-to-end -end experience. So what, what I mean by that is, in Project Pals, there's two ways to get started. You can either create your own product from scratch, um, and uh, that's, again, a, a bit more advanced skills. So we've also built a catalog here um, for people to be able to clone projects from our catalog uh, to get started. So um, whether that's a brainstorm and you're looking for students to do a simple brainstorm um, within Project Pals, you can go in and actually, it's, it's, it's a, it's a workspace that's updated in real time. Students can actually add all their own contributions here. Um, basically, uh, you can then clone this project. And when you clone a project from the catalog, it will actually make a copy, which is at that point, you can now modify to make your own. So at this point, all the kind of text here, all the materials, tasks, the workspace, everything becomes modifiable and becomes part of your own project. So whether you are getting started by creating your own project from scratch or going to our catalog and cloning a project from our catalog, um, it will go into this drafting area, which you will be able to, um, at this point, basically this is a teacher's only drafting area. And so once you have this project, it's, this is your master copy of it. And if it's ready to go, if this brainstorm template is ready to go, um, or actually I'm going to show a different project very quickly. Uh, if, uh, if you had a project that is ready to go, like this school impact project, which happens to be a project that's guiding students and coming up with a thesis, coming up with an argument and evidence and a conclusion about how to improve their school by coming up with a project that would benefit the school. Once it's ready to go for my drafts, you can assign the project to your class, like this social studies class, and then assign it. Once it gets assigned down there underneath the class, um, and now each of your class has teachers and members. Now all the student members will see that assignment waiting for them to start the project. When a student starts a project, it will actually make a copy of the project. So here you'll see that Sam and Sid, for example, who are students in this project, in this class, they made their own copy of this project and they edited all of the information here. They then changed this project um, to be about a water filtration system. That's what they were pitching for their school. They added supporting materials. They added a whole task board um, of how to delegate and kind of like break up the work within the project. And then they customized all of this text and all this media together, updated in real time, just like Google Docs. So the students from around the world could see me moving this piece of content around without having to refresh the page. And students essentially went and followed along with these scaffolds and prompts and customized this to make it their own. Um, additionally, and I know I have just another minute here before I'm going to pass it over to, to April. Another class in that pro in another group in that class, Sophia and Sean, they also made a copy. Uh, they started that project and they made their own copy of that project. And based on that template, they pitched and did the argument, conclusion, and evidence for a computer refurbishing program in their school. Um, so you can basically see how your master project from my drafts can be assigned to your class. Students will then start projects. From that, from that master project. And for you, one of the benefits is as a teacher, you have these master projects that you can then go and reference and reuse for years to come. Um, and then from an administrative perspective, you also have access to see all the student work as it progresses in the workspace. You can comment on the student work. You can also view detailed analytics about how much each group is doing and kind of compare and see that 
In this case, the water filtration system group has done more work than the computer recycling program. And you can- I love that part, um, wow. especially because I know one of the biggest complaints we have from teachers in our group is that um, a lot of times they don't have accountability and they don't really know like which kid is doing what. Um, and sometimes they have a hard time keeping track of if everybody in the group is participating. So the analytics and data in this are awesome. Right. So you can see at a bird's eye view that Sam is, is doing more right now in terms of actions than Sid. And then just for the very last thing that I'll show, and then I'll pass the, pass the mic over to, um, to April, is that uh, you can also do evaluation. So in addition to having all of the, the work within the workspace to view and all the analytics, and the students also can view the analytics, which, which is a big motivator for them to do, to do kind of pull their weight. You can also do rubric evaluation in the tool. So you can build your own rubrics. The students can reference the rubrics and you can assign them to the students and actually do N10 project management all here. So I think I was just a minute over, so it wasn't bad. Go, go ahead, April, I'll pass no, it off. I'm gonna put you over more because I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> sure. Can you go over a little bit more about the catalog and how they can find things in the catalog that are are good for what they what they want to do for their class for their grade level and so forth and maybe the difference between the starter projects and the templates in the lesson plan because absolutely different categories absolutely so the catalog um there's a bunch of filters here for duration so you know we recommend to get started with shorter projects and then build up to the month-long projects um starter projects are designed to be completed in a day or two uh they're about universal topics like digital citizenship or you know how to brainstorm in a group um, creating kind of mind maps of that brainstorm, fleshing things out. So universal topics. Templates are really broad. They're based on co popular projects in the classroom. So um, biography project template or a book report template or a historical event template. All of these are meant or science, scientific investigation. All of these are meant to be cloned by you, the teacher, and then you can modify them and adapt them to your subject matter. So you can make it about you know, Lord of the Flies or about Mahatma Gandhi. And you can actually go to click see details. You'll be able to see a summary of the project. When you go to view the project yourself, you'll be in read only mode. You won't be able to modify it until you clone it. Also, these videos are really nice little two minute long videos that kind of give you a preview of what the project is like. Um, and if you click see details, you also see related projects here. So this takes you to, oh, well, this takes you to a model project, which is not clonable. Um, it's another project type over here. Um, and that shows completed student work, almost like the teacher guide. So in this case, the, the Gandhi, you know, model project, which you cannot clone, is related to the biography project template and shows you what you might expect to see of the work of your students. Finally, the lesson plans, they are also clonable, and these are about a specific topic. So you'll see April's personal budget um, uh, lesson plan in here, or Save the Bees, also April published, and then several of ours from topics like um, what are the causes of the Civil War to um, you know where do plants get their food. So for topic specific lesson plans, um, for more templates, go to the templates and the starter projects are a great way to get started. Yeah, and these are a great way for, for anybody who hasn't done project-based learning in their class before and is totally overwhelmed. This is a great way to get started because it's already been created and it's already in there for you and you just have to tweak it a little bit for your class. So I highly recommend that. And then there's me, the person who's been doing project based learning for a long time, and I totally did it from scratch, which <laughs> I loved. And um, I just have to say, I, I think that it's really versatile, and I was able to really build it exactly how I would use it in my classroom, which is awesome. Great. Do you want to share your screen? Or, um... Yeah, let me share. Apologies if I picked the wrong one. There we go. All right. All right. Can you see it okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So, um, so like I said, I went in and made one completely from scratch. So I just went in and, and, and did a couple of popular topics um, that I've done with my students for years and we've always done uh, paper and pencil. And I basically digitized them. And what was really cool is as I was going through, especially with the personal budget one, I was able to, from all the different features in Project Tiles, I was able to um, actually come up with things to add to the project. So even after doing personal budget, I've done for eight years in a row. And so I even had other things that I've never done before that I was able to add to it and, and other resources that we haven't had before. So that was really nice. So you can find these in the catalog if you're interested in using them. They are 
um, mainly three, five, but they can be modified to be um, up to 12, especially the personal budget. But let me kind of walk you through the personal budget one because um, this is one that is very popular with all of you, I know. Um, so basically when I um, first started doing it from scratch, this was the first screen to come up and I looked for an awesome video on making a budget for students. And once I found that video on YouTube, I was able to just drop the link in and the video showed up right here for students, which was awesome. Um, usually I like to kick it off with a video for students. Sometimes we have a guest speaker come in and talk um, and uh, I like to record that as well. So I know that um, basically it's easy to put a video in here and this is kind of our introduction. Um, and then as far as a workspace goes, this is what I was most impressed with. So um, on the workspace, there are multiple tabs. Um, and for this one, um, the steps are already kind of set. Uh, but if you use it, you can definitely come in here and make some modifications once you clone it. But um, I basically use all the steps that I use with my students for this project as separate tabs. So the first thing we do is we choose a career and they kind of brainstorm some ideas. And it was really easy to like insert text and add um, lines and so forth to make a brainstorming organizer. Um, and I like to put the little, <laughs> I like to put directions up here, even though they're on the left too, because I know that sometimes students don't pay attention. So it's nice to have them in both places. And our next step was um, saving and giving. And it was really cool to be able to just easily incorporate pictures. So I found pictures on Google and I um, was able to just insert the URL for them. And then it shows up here and your students can do the same when they're working in the workspace. But um, I included these for scaffolding, which I think is really important. And then we go through renting a home, doing the budget for a car. Um, and I put some sample pictures in here, but students can research their own and they can drag and drop them in here. If you really want to use this project or any of the projects and you don't want really a lot of scaffolding, you can just, um, you can remove all the images once you clone it and you can send it to your students the way that you want it to be. Or if you want more scaffolding, you can add it. Uh, then we do our food budget. We do other expenses uh, and the students um, have a little space for their final product here. And I don't like to scaffold too much on the final product because I don't want them to all be the same. So I didn't put too much here as far as that goes as and comparing to the other tabs. So I really liked um, just setting up the workspace pretty much how I was comfortable with it when it was paper and pencil with my students. Uh, but I liked that it was able, you were able to have it kind of in order where students knew exactly which tab to do first. Um, but my absolute favorite thing is the task list. So I think I have to back out here to see it. But um, one of the things that I push, if you all have taken my project-based learning training is task lists, because what happens is your students will rush through things and just get it all done quickly and they'll miss really important details. So. I love the task list because you can add tasks here. So if you want your students to, if you wanna just add the tasks in each step on there, that's fine, but you can also add individual tasks. Um, so looking at the task, I can um, select any of my students and I can give them that specific task. So if you, let's say you have a group that is uh, working on the project um, and probably with not with a personal budget, but more of like a group project, and you notice that one student really isn't doing much, when you look in the analytic, analytics, you can go to your to-do list and you can assign that particular student a specific thing. Or if you have students who need more scaffolding or um, just need a little extra help, you can break this down and only assign a to-do list item to that student. So that was really nice. I love that it shows when they're in progress and when they're done with it. It's really, really cool. Um, and then like Yuri was showing you the statistics tab is really awesome. I don't have as much data as his example one did because I don't have students in here yet. Um, but it was really nice just to, to know that when students start working on this, that I'll be able to see who's doing what. So if you're interested in this one, it is in the catalog. Um, and I want to mention too, so if you have not signed up yet, 
and um, wait till this is over. <laughs> but you, if you're taking notes, write down the link. It's performingeducation.com slash project pals, and that'll take you straight to the sign up page. Um, and it is free to sign up. So, and uh, let me just show you really quick the um, Save the Bees one. And this is the science one, and very similar. I set up the workspace in kind of the same way. Um, I liked that it was really um, open ended. So, um, I kind of have a different style than other teachers do. And so it was nice that I was able to kind of personalize it to me. So and then this one, this one's definitely a faster um, project as far as the research portion goes and the implementation part was really more where you spend a lot of your time, but there's a lot of different uh, pieces you can drag and drop for your students to organize their steps, to organize the group roles, um, which, whoops, I have that misspelled, but, <laughs> and then add notes. So just a lot of different things that you can do in here for any kind of project. And I know I didn't even use all the features, but I want to say too that um, as you're working in Project Pals, if you have questions, um, Yuri and Miriam are very open to questions and they respond quickly. It's, there's this little chat dialogue here, which is awesome. Um, but also the YouTube channel. Um, if you put in Project Pals into YouTube, search their YouTube channel is really awesome. And that's kind of, I watched all those videos and then I made mine from scratch and I had really no problems. So. I love it. It's great, you guys. <laughs> Seriously, it's awesome. And you were saying, um, and you still have some new features coming out, right? You, you're, there's still more being added. That's right. We're always, we're always iterating on the product and, you know, we're always looking for feedback from users. So, you know, as you guys are working at it, you know, the live chat is really the best way to, to reach us. And whether it's, you know, constructive feedback or questions, whatever it is, we're, we're always happy to kind of hear it and then, you know, uh, things do end up on the product roadmap and we end up, you know, adding, sometimes we'll add user features, requests that came from users end up in the application, so. That's great. So if you see something and, and you have an idea of something that's not already on there while you're messing with it, use that little chat box and let them know, hey, I'd like to see this. Um, yep. You know, I, I shared a couple things already, <laughs> but I, I, I really like what's on there already. I, I don't, I don't even remember what I shared with you because because I'm already was able to build my project and it was great. But um, and I, I don't think I mentioned this, but you're able to tag standards on there too, which I think is really important. Yeah, you can tag standards. Um, something I didn't mention too, and I know we want to open it to Q and A as well. So if anybody does have questions, just I guess type it type it in the chat. April, is that the best way to do it? Yeah, let's do it in the chat, and then we'll answer whatever questions and. Well. As we start to get questions, I'll just talk real quickly about how to get started, like with the, the kind of different plans that we offer. So um, if everyone, can you see the, the pricing page right now? Yeah. Okay. So the class, pro this is what many of you have probably, uh, some of you have already signed up for this already, and you can just go to get it free now, which will take you, oops, I'm logged in, so it didn't take me to the sign-in page. But uh, if you, uh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> So if you go here and get it free now, it will take you to the sign up page and then you can just fill out this form to sign up as a teacher or you can also use Google. And if you do use Google, you can import your class through Google Classroom. Um, and this is up to 20 projects and 50 students. So we've gotten some questions about how we count that. Each project that your students start counts as a project. So if you had um, you know, 20 students in your class, because you can add up to 50 students in this plan. So let's say you, you add 20 students and invite them to the system, um, and then they, you break them up into groups of four. Um, they could do up to five projects. Each group could do five projects within your 20, you know, project allotment for that freemium. So it definitely gives you an opportunity to get a couple projects under your belt to test out, you know, whether this is a good platform for you. Um, from there, there are options to purchase. So these are not meant to be purchased by a teacher directly, but rather to go get budget from an administrator to purchase. So $500 per teacher per year, and that opens up unlimited projects and students. So that's if you're like an individual teacher or if there's a small team of teachers that want to use the platform. And if there's interest at a school level, we offer a school license that's from five to $10 per student per year. 
and that's unlimited projects and teachers and there's a sliding scale at the bottom that basically the, the price per student goes down, the more students that are participating. Um, if there's interest in that level, we also can discuss other opportunities like pilot programs and we definitely want to give people ample opportunity, whether it's a teacher signing up for premium or a school testing at a pilot level, that this is the right solution for you guys before you make the plunge to the next step. Definitely, yeah. And if your school is going full project-based learning, especially this year or next year, it's definitely something I would talk to your administrators about because I, I think that having this extra system here and having the scaffolding would be really helpful for teachers because we were just talking about before the webinar um, that like teachers see this and they say, oh, that's, this is project-based learning. Okay, I can do that. You know, I can definitely, um, I can definitely plan like that. Whereas when you're just getting trained on project-based learning, it seems really difficult to understand. Um, and so this is definitely a really good visual for teachers. So if you're somebody who's already doing project-based learning in your school, kind of hesitant, uh, it might be something that you could kind of bring in an administrator and show them what you're doing in the platform and say, look, this is what I'm doing. It's very easy, um, especially if you have student devices. There's, I mean, so much that can be done on it with student devices. So I think that is really important. And definitely let them know if you're interested in taking this to your school, but you need extra support, if you need someone to meet with your administrators and tell them a little bit about it, um, definitely let them know or you can email me too and I'll forward it on. Uh, but I, I think it's really good, especially if your whole school can collaborate, if everybody's using it, that would be awesome. Yeah, well, the, the collaboration stuff, just to highlight that, you can co-author projects with other teachers in my drafts, like April and, Mir April and Miriam were doing a little bit of collaborative work um, in the platform earlier. So you can, before you assign a project to your class, when you're in drafting it, you can invite a teacher and then create that master project. And then both of you own that project and then you can actually assign it to your own individual classes, even with teachers from around the world. So if you collaborate with people within your school or outside of your school, that's a way to, to create projects together and design them. But then you can also co-teach classes together. So that's the other level of collaboration where if April and Miriam both had their own classes, they could actually co-teach that class and bring their own student rosters together to collaborate on projects. And that works not only within your school, but any other teacher that has a Project Pals account can bring, you can co-teach with them. So you could, you could actually have classes collaborating on projects in real time from around the world. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know I've had many teachers ask me, you know, how can I work with another class that's, that's not in my building um, if, because they're doing project-based learning on their own. And this is a really good way to do that. Awesome. Um, any questions from the attendees um, out there right now? Yeah, if you have a question, just um, click the chat and type it in there and we will try our best to answer it. Um, if not, I know a lot of people are going to watch on replay because um, it's election day in the States. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we have a lot on replay. Um, and if anyone is watching on replay and has questions, they can always email me or they can use your chat box too on the website. So. So we'll give it like a minute and if there aren't any questions, I think we can wrap it up and then we'll handle those individually. Perfect. Okay. Um, I do have a question for Miriam. Um, I know I'm gonna get this question. <laughs> so um, how would you use this platform with the younger students, like kinder first? Can you give us a little bit of insight? I know I'm gonna get that question. I know it's great for all, for all those great Sure. Uh, we, I actually prepared the project <clears throat> for younger students and maybe um, I'll, I'll yeah share it please if you don't mind mm -hmm. which one the, the catalog. Uh, yeah how, how kids play i think So what's happens, what happens here is basically just took a, an idea of, and there are multiple levels here basically, and just, just took a map and uh, decided uh, to use our annotation tool to show how kids play around the world. And all they do, they use the annotation tool, they can add an image, they can add a text underneath it that describes how these kids play and put it on the map, which is, I, I thought this was very cool. Uh, then um, another option is, of course, uh, kids play one, basically just putting 
images on the workspace and adding using the text tool like as if it were uh, sticky notes and typing what these what, what what the kids think about what's going on in the picture and so that's you know this this is a cool way for them to kind of uh, reflect on what's going on in the pictures and um, and you know as we continue on these tabs it becomes a little bit more complex and this is for a little bit older kids they also reflect on images but here they also have uh, you they are using our events tool uh, where they are <clears throat> describing the process of how one of these uh, games is being played, like the catch the, uh, the dragon tail. So you see how the, you know, how the, the entire game is being played using our events tool. And um, finally, the last one, which is again, advances a little bit in, in level for older kids. Uh, this is again, uh, pictures of, of how kids play in Indonesia. But what uh, I did here is added some creative part to it. So kids can actually describe uh, what they believe is going on in the pictures with these short little essays. And they can also talk about the country, about Indonesia. And uh, I actually created also, if you scroll down, Yuri, I think I also created a, um, yeah, uh, our uh, component tool that describes uh, the country, describes Indonesia and, you know, and all the typical characteristics of Indonesia. So uh, there are lots of options. You can you can actually, you know, uh, from a younger kid to older kids, you can choose all of these. And I think this is a cool project. Yeah, I think that one really shows differentiation too. If you, if you had a project and you wanted to use the tabs to differentiate between different levels, especially if you are working in a special education classroom, I think that'd be, that'd be cool too. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think, especially in your, in the Kids Play One, that it's something that you could display really big from your teacher computer. And as the kids are telling you what they think about the pictures, you can be typing it into the workspace. So you're kind of working with the kids to um, get those digital skills in, but you're not expecting them to write full sentences um, in it like when they're kinder or first grade. So I really like that. Yep. And um... a question um, from Christina. Yes. Yeah. Tina was wondering, um, she said, can I leave feedback directly into a student's project? Yes. So you are a participant, and I'll just go down into these classes really quickly. You're a participant in all of the projects that are happening. So here we're in Miriam's class, and every, every group that starts a project in your class, you, you as a teacher are automatically added to each group's project. So there's never going to be an instance where students are going to have a project going on that you're not going to be part of. All of their project creation happens underneath the classes. They don't have access to the drafting area. They don't have access to the catalog. So everything that they create will either be, will be underneath your class, whether they're creating a new project from scratch or they're starting one that you've assigned to them. And then you as a teacher will be added to that. So here you'll see the team members of this project. Miriam's the teacher and these are all the students participating with her. And Miriam would be able to go through and see all of this content as it's unfolding, as all the students are adding um, their own information. And this is actually a model project of students that did a real world project where they took a, they had voice and choice and picked a real issue in society that they, that they, you know, were interested in learning more about in this case, homelessness. They did a lot of research about it. And then they actually got involved in real life and went and took photos of what they did and imported it. So we really want to show that the project house is also like, it's about the research and the process, but then if you build a product or if you go do something and get involved and implement, you can document your implementation, whether it's building a robot or going to a soup kitchen, take photos and videos of what you're doing and then import that back into Project Pals so that the project doesn't end with the planning. It actually continues even afterwards with analysis of what you guys did. And, and that's what they did in this project. They kind of looked at what their impact was. But as a teacher, Miriam could see all of this unfolding and each asset you can comment on kind of like Google comments. So she can go and say, oh, our help plan, you know, this, this is great, or this needs work or whatever the case is. And she can comment on the work, the students will see the comments and they can come in and they can reply and resolve the issue. Um, so that's one way of, of kind of providing input as, as the students are working up within the project. Also, because you're a collaborator in these projects, you actively can go and add your own text and your own questions and your own media into the projects if you feel that you want to get that involved. So it's really up to you whether you want to comment and kind of leave it at that level or really become an active participant in the students' projects as well. Yeah, I think that's great. And if you 
So something that I always push is getting feedback from experts. Um, so I think having the ability to invite someone as a co-author could allow you to, um, you know, have another teacher give feedback or maybe share it with a particular expert. Um, we actually have this user type that um, for experts. So with that exact intention that if you're bringing someone in from the local community, that's not a teacher, that's not a student, whether they're from local government or enterprise, whatever the case is, you know, charity, you can actually add them as an expert and they might design the project with you or might, you know, be, be a collaborator with the student work. So if you have that buy-in, by all means, bring them in and, and help them, help them, you know, help the team. So. That's perfect. Yeah, you thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot in here, but, but like we said, you know, like it's, it's, it's a thing where you can get started with a simple brainstorm and you can, with some of the simpler starter projects and then work your way into um, some of the projects we didn't, we didn't highlight too much, but some that are really geared towards computational thinking and design thinking that kind of get into how engineers approach collaborative problem solving, which is, which is an exciting part of the application as well. Yeah, that's perfect. I love it. Um, so I think um, if you want teachers, you want teachers to just sign up and play with it, right? That's kind of what you want them to do after the training. Yeah, the goal is, uh, uh, yeah, sign up, play with it. Um, I'll, I'll just share my screen one more time to show you, you know, where you can kind of raise your hand if you have questions as you go along, because we know it's a, it's a new platform. So um, we'd love to engage with you directly. You know, we're, um, can you see the application again? Is that, am I sharing the right screen? I can see a uh, chat. The, a chat, okay, one second. Um, okay, how about now? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this is the little intercom guy down here. You can just pop this open and start a new conversation and say, I need help. And me or Miriam or someone from the team will respond to you as soon as we can. These are some of the training videos that um, April suggested watching, which kind of walk you through the process of cloning a project, creating a class, assigning the project, getting students to start working on it, and how to kind of interpret all the data that we present back to you. Um, you can even search our help center here. So if you want to know how to add text on the workspace, you can just search it, look at the article right within the application. So this is how you can do kind of self-service, but you know, yeah, please test it out, clone some projects, create your own projects, um, and let us know how you'd like to use it. You know, we, we want to hear from you and um, want to make sure that you have a great experience working on the platform. Perfect. Well, thank you both for doing this for our group. I think people we're pretty excited to learn a little bit more about it and have um, our own opportunity to hear from you both. Uh, so thank you. And thank you. Let, let me know if there's any other way I can share it. I would love to. Um, and we'll definitely share it as a YouTube video as well. So if you're live and you want to forward it on to somebody else, we'll make sure to send you the replay too. Excellent. Thank Sounds you good. Thank everyone who attended. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.